Cauldron Lake is the site of a reoccurring AWE. Between the circumstances surrounding Thomas Zane and the Anderson brothers in the 70s, and the 2010 incident with Alan Wake, it has many documented flare-ups. While these ones are recorded by the FBC, many more either went under the radar or were not considered relevant enough to pay attention to. Clay Stewart uncovered an article that details several of these stories. In the previous video, we looked at just one of them. But today, we'll dig deeper and look at another oddity that was summoned up by Cauldron Lake. Local legends of monsters are not unheard of throughout the world. The Loch Ness Monster is certainly famous. Bright Falls is no different. For Cauldron Lake, various sightings of a dark cloud have been witnessed. The locals do not have a better name since agreement on exactly what it is was never reached. While not all of the stories may be related, they are similar enough that local legend conflated them all into the so-called Dark Cloud. One such story tracks back to 1977. A young couple was engaged in amorous activities on the shore of Cauldron Lake when the Dark Cloud emerged and brought forth a storm with it. Prior to the cloud's appearance, the night was clear, no sign of rain or wind. Due to the time period, this event may have been related to the Anderson brothers when they were dabbling in the powers of the lake. If we review the FBC's AWE report for Bright Falls, we see a near one-to-one -one account. Quote, The citizens of Bright Falls had gathered in the town's southwestern fields for the annual festival known as Deerfest. Eyewitnesses all claim that the day had been sunny, confirmed by reviews of the area's weather reports. But then, with no warning, a thunderstorm appeared in the direction of the Anderson farm, and a tornado rose from the Cauldron Lake. The torrential rain that followed caused a flash flood." End quote. During this situation, Sheriff and former FBC agent Frank Breaker managed to get the townsfolk out of the storm's way. The same report notes that similar events have been documented in the Bright Falls region even though they were unable to confirm this one. Granted, this event occurred in 1976, when the ones witnessed by the young couple was in 1977. Whether this is simply a second similar event or a mistake on the dates is not known. However, in addition to the dark cloud heralding a storm, the two witnesses reported that snake-like tendrils emerged from the cloud. James Alford questions if this is related to the phenomenon of sky serpents. He cites occurrences in Utah and the western part of the United States in the 1800s. However, after I investigated this, sightings of sky serpents have occurred all over the world. Accounts go back as far as the 8th century. In the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a series of manuscripts that track the history of the Anglo-Saxons, an account of sky serpents was documented in 793 AD. Quote, There were exceptional flashes of lightning and fiery dragons were seen flying in the air, and soon followed a great famine. In Knighton's Chronicon, accounts of twisting serpents and flying dragons were reported in April of 1388 and December of 1762 over Devonshire, England. Missouri settlers in the mid-1800s and Texas farmers in 1873 reported sightings as well. These stories are far too numerous to count. However, on July 6th of 1873, the New York Times reported all of the mania simply as a case of mass delirium, calling it, quote, the very worst case of delirium tremens on record, end quote. Regardless of the truth of these alleged sightings, the stories are worldwide and pervasive in the public consciousness. As a result, Cauldron Lake fed well. It does not distinguish between pieces of art, urban legends, or even mass delirium. Separate from this, another instance of the so-called Black Cloud manifested itself in a similar way as the aforementioned Loch Ness Monster. In 1975, a woman named Ingrid Peterson witnessed a, quote, dark brontosaurus-shaped figure emerge from the lake. Its head and neck stretched roughly 40 feet above the surface. There were no eyes or other distinguishing features, just a general blackness to its shape. One so deep that she described it as, quote, a darkness so intense that the contrast can be seen even at night." End quote. After reporting this to the authorities, her account was discounted due to her history with alcoholism. Imagination is a funny thing. For those who have heard the tales from Loch Ness, it is impossible for Cauldron Lake to not pick up on them. Even if Miss Peterson wasn't a drunken stupor, her imagination could have manifested the blurry outline of what she believed the monster to look like. Hence why it didn't have any features, only the rough outline. 
All of these stories are similar, only so much as the manifestations from the lake take on a dark image. Allen certainly experienced the dark presence bring tornadoes and high winds. The Andersons experienced a full thunderstorm in the 70s. It may be the same presence in all cases. Based upon Peterson's account, it appears that the common thread between these reports is that they are made from the same material, manifested darkness. Throughout Alan Wake and even in Control, we come across these little puddles of darkness. While the nature of them is not fully detailed, it comes off like an ectoplasm from the dark presence, a remnant material of its passing. If this is a malleable material, each of the manifestations detailed in Alfred's article could be made up of the same substance, just formed into whatever image the current story demands. The nature of the dark cloud is variable. Whether it is simply a manifestation of the dark presence or the material that makes up the creations of Cauldron Lake, one thing is certain. It is not the last time the dark cloud will make an appearance. I'll see you all next time when we tackle the next oddity of Bright Falls as detailed by James Alford. See you then. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.